Uh, hello there. This is Elena in my channel Enough. Today I'm saying enough corruption. Not only in Russia, but everywhere. And today I fulfill my promise, which I told you in one of my previous videos, that I let Mr. Putin, Russian president, admit basically himself that he's corrupted politician. As public, it's, it is public knowledge that he's corrupted, but the extent of, it, of his corruption and proof from himself that he is corrupted, I think would be interesting to see, especially for Putin's supporters. Um, first of all, I decided to check it out really quickly. Um, how much the president of Russia making, how much money making president of Russia, what his um, income. Uh, this is the site Kremlin Ru, uh, one of the official sites. And this is what I got from that site. Mm, corruption. To prove corruption of Putin, let's see how much he making. This is from 2021 for the whole year, from 1st of January to the 31st of December. Uh, Putin declared that he made 10,222, 10,222,616 rubles. So basically, ten little bit over 10 million rubles, which is um, roughly 170,000 US dollars by nowadays, just today uh, rate. In 2021, it probably could have been more. Okay, let's pretend that's 200,000 US dollars a year. If to multiply that by, I don't know, 22 years in power, whatever, how, how long he's in power. In general, let's say he making 5 million rubles, a uh, million dollars US in the whole time he was president and even during time when Mr. Medvedev was president and Putin wasn't a president, but ruling the country anyway, which is his salary would be less this years when Mr. Medvedev was president. But let's be generous. Let's give him, I don't know, 4,600 or 5 million dollars US. And there is another site which saying uh, about his salary and income started from 2008. So this is million rubles, 4.72, 3.89, and so on. And last one, the same, 10.2 million rubles. So basically, there is information about his income and how much he make. But even if he make, let's say, for the whole time of presidency and being in power, not being a president, let's say 5 million US dollars just to know what kind of numbers we're talking about. And the proof I would like to show you. You probably saw it in the past. In 2018, there was press conference between President Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin when they were answer answering questions uh, from the reporters. And this happened in Helsinki, Finland. Let's watch a little piece of that video where Putin actually answering questions. And um, and the question was, this is a transcript of the of the press conference. You will hear Putin now saying that. Uh, the question was about uh, for President Putin, if I could follow follow up as well, why should Americans and why should Russian uh, why should President Trump believe your statement that Russia didn't intervene in 2016 election, given the evidence that U.S. intelligence agencies have provided. And will you consider it extradi extraditing uh, 12 Russian officials that were indicted last week by U.S. grand jury? Uh, the question isn't interesting by itself for this purpose of this video. It's interesting in any other ways and for some maybe other videos. And so we'll skip the answer of Trump and a big chunk of answer of Putin. Right now, I'll show you the little piece Putin answering himself 
um, uh, about that. And see what Putin has to say. Please listen carefully and remember the, the name of the person Putin will talk about. The things that off the top of my head. We have an acting an existing agreement between the United States of America and the Russian Federation, an existing treaty that dates back to 1999, uh, the mutual assistance on criminal cases. This treaty is in full effect. It works quite efficiently. On an average, we initiate about 100, 150 criminal cases upon request from foreign states. Uh, for instance, the last year, uh, there was a, one extradition case upon the request sent by the United States. So this treaty has specific legal procedures. We can offer that the appropriate commission headed by by Special Attorney Mueller, he can use this treaty as a solid foundation and send an formal and official request to us so that we would interrogate, we would hold a questioning of these individuals who he believes are privy to some crimes. And our law enforcement are perfectly able to do this questioning and send the appropriate materials to the United States. Moreover, we can meet you halfway, we can make another step. We can actually permit official representatives of the United States, including the members of this very commission headed by Mr. Mueller. We can let them into the country and they will be present at this questioning. But in this case, there is, a, there is another condition. Uh, so far, he didn't say anything all that interesting, and right now started to be most interesting part. So basically, Putin uh, saying quid pro quo, Clarice. If you watch Silence of the Lamb, you know what I'm talking about. То есть, what Putin wants in exchange that uh, American uh, law officials can question somebody and his support and help to United States in certain investigations. What does he want in exchange? This is the most important part of what he's, he has to say, starting right now. This kind of effort should be a mutual one. Then we would expect that the Americans would reciprocate and they, they would question officials, including the um, officers of law enforcement and intelligence services of the United States, whom we believe are, who have something to do with illegal actions on the territory of Russia. And we have to, um, to request the presence of our law enforcement. For instance, we can bring up the Mr. Mr. Browder in this particular case. Business associates of Mr. Browder have earned over one and a half billion dollars in Russia. They never paid any taxes, neither in Russia nor in the United States. And yet the money escaped the country. They were transferred to the United States. They sent a huge amount of money, 400 million as a contribution to, uh, to the campaign of Hillary Clinton. Well, that's their personal case. It might have been legal, the contribution itself, but the way the money was earned was illegal. So we have a solid reason to believe that some intelligence officers accompanied and guided these transactions. So we have a, an interest of questioning them. But we can all, that, that could be a first step and we can also extend it. Options abound. And uh, they all can be found in an appropriate legal framework. And did you direct any of your... So, it is a press conference. And it was a summit between two presidents of two big countries, between the United States and between Russia. 
and imagine yourself on the place of one of the presidents let's say either one of the two what would you talk about with the other president and leader of the other country just think about it what would you talk with them about you would talk about important political situations and important things would happening in the world perhaps like at the time you would discuss syria you would discuss this you would discuss that here putin using a question who was uh, asked by some reporter for what what exactly putin talking about he talking about a person a one person named bill browder William Browder. Do you know who William Browder, William Browder is? Many of you probably never heard his name before. And why is that? Because it's not a significant person who you wouldn't normally know during the, unless you actually researched any of this or something. It could be any other name, John Smith. It probably doesn't mean for majority of people more than just any any name. And see what happens. President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, asking President of the United States to give him for questioning, basically give to Putin, British citizen William Browder. Why would Putin even talk about Browder? Who is Browder anyway? Like why? President of a big country, Russia, so concerned about some person? That is a really good question. Let's see what... In transcript, here it is. That's what Putin wants. We can bring up Mr. Bill Browder. First of all, Putin is lying about that Browder didn't pay taxes in Russia and this and that, but that's not the point. He also lied about 400 million contribution to Hillary Clinton, which is, there is a fact checked with explaining this. I'll give the link in my, um, in the description to that video. So you can see that he falsely claimed this and he was wrong about that and this and that and contributions to Hillary Clinton campaign and and so on. So this is what these people find out, fact check. This is what Mr. Browder has to say about that. This is who Mr. Browder is. Basically, it's a businessman who came to Russia to make money, uh, created the fund Hermitage Capital, and he is the chief executive officer of Hermitage Capital Management. And basically his company worked in Russia, made money in Russia, paid taxes in Russia. And then what happened? It was the largest, by the way, foreign investor in Russia until 2005. And then he exposed Russian corruption and human rights abuses. Even wrote a book about that. And he fighting against Putin and his oligarchs to put sanctions on them for the murder of his associate Sergei Magnitsky. It's called Magnitsky Laws. That's what Mr. Browder has to say himself. I wasn't watching the Donald Trump Vladimir Putin press conference from Helsinki, but when my phone started burning up with messages, I knew something was going on. I quickly discovered that Putin has mentioned me by name. No journalist had asked me about he had asked about me. He just brought me up out of the blue, which we just clearly saw. He was answering absolutely different question, Putin. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, he talking about a person. A person, Mr. Browder. Putin offered to allow American investigators to interview the 12 Russian intelligence agents just in the, in, di, indicted by special course counsel Robert Mueller in exchange for allowing Russians to have access to me and those close to me. This is no idle threat, 
For the last 10 years, I've been trying to avoid getting killed by Putin's regime, and there already exists a trail of dead bodies connected to its desire to see me dead. Amazingly, Trump stood next to him appearing to nod approvingly. He even later said that he considered an incredible offer. I am lodged so firmly under Putin's skin because I'm the person responsible for getting the Magnitsky Act passed in the United States in 2012. This is the law that allows US, the US government to freeze assets and ban visas of human rights violators around the world. Some of those human rights violators had killed Sergei Magnitsky, my Russian lawyer, who was murdered in Moscow jail for uncovering a massive $230 million government corruption scheme that we were see, since traced to known Putin cronies. In essence, Putin received some of the proceeds of this crime, and he is terrified that Magnitsky Act could be applied to his offshore fortune, which probably one of the largest ever made in modern times. So, this is basically who Mr. Magnitsky, uh, Mr. Magnitsky is. He discovered the corruption, huge corruption, and um, his lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, reported it. As a result, Magnitsky was thrown in jail, the crime was pinned on Magnitsky, and Magnitsky was murdered in jail. I'm a little bit tell you the shortcut about that. So this is what happened. Imagine if you would have steal $230 million, and still successfully. If you would be a good person, you wouldn't steal anyways. Nothing. Good people don't steal. But if you are not a good person and you steal that kind of money, would you report on yourself? I don't think so. You stole the money, you get away with it, wire off the boat. It doesn't make any sense. So, after that happened to Mr. Magnitsky, Mr. Browder started his basically personal vendetta against Putin and against oligarchs, who personally responsible in the death of Sergei Magnitsky, and he started from making uh, investigations and certain videos. I give the link to it also in the video. It's called Russian Untouchables. And he naming the criminals by name and proving their guilt. Jameson Farstone is founder and managing partner of a Moscow-based law firm, Farstone Duncan, and has been acting for clients in Russia since 1993. It all began in 2007, when Lieutenant Colonel Artyom Kuznetsov from the Ministry of Internal Affairs led two raids uh, in Moscow to confiscate the documents of three companies that belonged to Hermitage Fund. Within months of those documents being in the possession of the Ministry of Interior, they were used to change the owner and director of the Hermitage companies to a convicted killer, Viktor Markelov. And then the companies applied for a fraudulent $230 million tax refund which they received in one day. In October of 2008, my colleague, Sergei Magnitsky, who managed the tax and audit department of my Moscow law firm, Firestone Duncan, discovered the fraud. He gave official witness testimony against Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov and his colleague, Major Pavel Karpov. He detailed how they were involved in the theft of the $230 million. Within one month of Sergei testifying against the officers, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov had Sergei arrested. Once Sergei had been detained, he was refused bail. They held him in prison for a year, and he was subjected to incredible psychological and physical pressure, uh, torture in prison, to retract his testimony against the officers uh, Kuznetsov and, and, and Karpov, which he refused to do. While Sergei was being tortured and pressured to withdraw his claims, the Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov aided the $230 million theft the Kuznetsov family became rich. According there are several videos about that. One was about Kuznetsov. This one is about Pavel Karpov, Major Karpov. Old Karpov, a 32-year-old officer in the main investigation unit of the Moscow Interior Ministry, played a key role in defrauding the Russian people of $230 million and in the cover-up which led to the death of Sergei Magnitsky. Uh, another one was Olga Stepanova, another criminal in this case, and... Today, we're going to show you how officials in Moscow Tax Office Number 28 and their families became 
$43 million richer after their office approved fraudulent tax refunds uncovered by Sergei Magnitsky. In the last video... In previous episodes of Russian Untouchables, we showed you how Russian police officers and tax officials helped steal $230 million from the Russian government, and how Sergei Magnitsky exposed them and ended up dead. Today, we're going to show you who murdered Sergei Magnitsky. After investigation like that, Mr. Browder, that's him, uh, proof, proved corruption in Russia. And one would think Russia and Russian people and Russian uh, officials would be happy to find out that the bad guys get caught, that it's proven who stole 230 million dollars from Russians. But no, I don't think so. Putin accused Magnitsky, uh, accused Browder in the very crime what Russian officials committed. That is why Mr. Browder, Browder started his own vendetta about against corrupted politicians involved in the death of Sergei Magnitsky. That is why a lot of countries, including my country, Canada, passed the Magnitsky law and put sanctions on Russian oligarchs and people who is involved. And the question here is, why would the president of Russian Federation, Mr. Putin, out of the blue, bringing up the name of Mr. Browder in a press conference with the president of the United States? and demanding, asking, and pressing, basically, to make, uh, to get access to Mr. Browder. If Putin wouldn't be a corrupted politician who stole a whole bunch of money from Russian people, and he would never do that, would he? Would you do that on his place? No, I wouldn't either. This is the interview of Mr. Browder, the big interview about one hour, uh, where he explaining very well many things about Mr. Putin. And um, I recommend you to watch that. In about 2006, I think, when you were first refused entry into Russia. But then the first time I met you, I discovered that your grandfather had been himself. Uh, a... So anyways, uh, this interview you can watch by yourself. Um, I just will give you the link where it's all explained more about Putin's corruption and uh, explaining that the money Putin has, Putin have, uh, it's not really all of it in his hands. There are lots of officials, there are lots of his relatives, there are lots of people who he knows who are holding his money for him. That is why he has to stay in power to be able to get access to that money and if he would not be in power then the money he people owe, owe him and so on for them would be easier to kill him than to give him money back so he only get access to this money when he is in power that is why he has to stay in power no matter what and this is the direct link from here to the war in ukraine which means that he started that war on the false impression that it would be quick and easy to get to Kiev in three days. Everybody will greet him as flowers. But now he's stuck in that war. Russian, Russian soldiers are dying there, killing Ukrainians. Lots of Ukrainians had to leave their country. Cities destroyed. But because of his corruption, Putin cannot stop that war. If he lose power, he will lose his life. That corruption we're talking about today, I didn't finish quite yet about that, uh, led to the terrible state of Russian army, which was used to be considered before this war a second army in the world or something like that. And now people all over the world see how poorly equipped army, the soldiers are starving, they don't have the equipment, they don't have 
anything basically good weapons or anything which is great for ukraine and it is good that they don't but this is why when people asking me on quora a lot of questions about that war and about russia and ukraine this is why uh i i explaining them that this is why they when they asking why russian army performing so bad why this happening this is this and that the big part of it the starting of this war or how badly russian army perform in this war it's a corruption personal corruption of putin and lots of his oligarchs and cronies and military commanders and so on and one of the people who is mostly exposed the corruption of putin is russian opposition leader oppositional leader alexei navalny i have a separate video about him who is now imprisoned and in jail partly for what he does and what he does is exposing putin's corruption and this is a lot of videos about putin personally and his family i want to show you just a few so you can come and see it for yourself this is called putin's palace history of world's largest bribe golden insanity real pictures of putin's palace the mystery of dacha uh, countryside house of putin on Valdai. putin miller gazprom the billions for the silence where disappeared ludmila putina ex-wife of putin the secret of shaherizad putin's yacht for 75 billion rubles and secret uh, countryside house of putin and so on and so in these videos the team of mr navalny proving beyond any doubt about corruption of putin and showing as we remember if maybe putin made in the whole years in power five billion us dollars total in all 20 something years of human power look what he owned look what he has this is a palace near Geleandrik on the black sea coast все говорили что снять это невозможно ну мы и сами так думали а потом взяли и попробовали не получилось попробовали еще сделали четыре попытки но получилось только однажды представляем вам самый секретный дворец в россии дворец путина под геленджиком вот он прямо перед вами это самый большой частный жилой дом в россии его официально подтвержденная площадь по документам 17 с половиной тысяч квадратных метров его даже особо не с чем сравнивать самые роскошные дома на рублевке в несколько раз меньше это новый версаль или новый зимний дворец по-настоящему царское место любуемся на него снаружи пока только снаружи давайте подлетим достаточно близко чтобы увидеть все в деталях так, что это происходит? Какой-то синий брезент, окна законопачены, бассейн закрыт, стройматериалы лежат на земле, снуют еле заметные на фоне дворца рабочие. Что же происходит? Почему здесь стройка? Ведь на спутниковых снимках шестилетней давности было видно, что дворец полностью готов. Нам объяснили строители. Все действительно было готово уже давно, но потом случилась катастрофа. Имя ей Плесень и разгильдяйство. Дворец был спроектирован с ошибками. Не работала вентиляция, тек потолок и высокая влажность. В общем, решили переделать все. Вообще все. Об... So, this is a huge palace of Putin. And there is a whole video about that, as I, as I showed you. And it has English subtitles, as we can see. That's why I didn't translate what Mr. Navalny was talking in this video. Because there are subtitles. So, this palace alone way more than putin made as a president by his salary but that's not all there is a yacht and it's not just one yacht putin has several yachts this yacht called shahirizada also discovered by and proved by это итальянский land. порт marina di carrara западное побережье италии вот тут в порту стоит новейшая яхта с загадочным названием Шихерезада. Эта яхта стоит 75 миллиардов рублей. Ее длина 140 метров, а в ней 6 этажей палуб. Это как если бы две хрущевки пристыковали друг к другу и отправили плавать. 
Там есть все, что только можно представить. Две вертолетные площадки, бассейн, спа-комплекс, салон красоты, огромные гостиные и царские каюты. И у этой яхты удивительная история. Если открыть список самых больших яхт в мире, то нашу Шахерезаду очень просто найти. Вот, например, на третьем месте это яхта Эклипс, это яхта Абрамовича. Или на пятом месте Дельбар. Вы ее тоже отлично знаете, это яхта Легарху Усманова, и она сейчас арестована. А вот тут, на тринадцатом месте, Шахерезада. И с ней очень интересный момент получается, потому что в отличие от других я в списке, никто не знает, кому Шахерезада принадлежит. То есть это... Но в этой инвестиции показано, что этот яд принадлежит Путину. И это только один из его ядов. Но не только Путин сам, его семья, его дочери, его дочери, его дочери, Людмила Путина. Это инвестиция, называется «Биллион для сильности», где Людмила Путин исчезла. И это имя... In the heart of Moscow, belong to Lyudmila Putina and her new husband, Acheretny, which is again proven by Mr. Navalny's team, and this one is Maria Pevchik, by the way, uh, the host of the show. Почти 12 тысяч квадратных метров в самом сердце Москвы. Само здание и земля под ним стоят, ну, миллиардов десять. И на сдаче этого здания в аренду наша парочка и зарабатывает. Uh, by renting this building, uh, the couple, the, the couple uh, uh, ex Madam Putina and her new husband Ochretny making a lot of money by renting this, uh, this, this building. This is also interesting, very interesting investigation done by uh, Navalny Anti-Corruption Fund and, and there are quite a few else. Like, as I showed you, there are several videos. If you're interested, you can watch it more closely. And there are many others uh, about, not only about Putin, about Medvedev and so on, uh, about other people I'll talk in different video. This video was about Mr. Putin. And what I want to say that the salary as a president of Mr. Putin, not even covering any of this, what I just showed you. And, uh, but was also important in my opinion to hear from Putin himself. When he brought up the name of the Mr. Browder to me and to everybody who knows the history of the Magnitsky Act and uh, about imprisonment and murder of Mr. Magnitsky, this situation is obvious. If Putin wouldn't be a corrupted politician, if his money wouldn't be abroad, if the money of the people who close to him, his wife, his daughters, his Alina Kabaeva, his uh, lover and mother of his children, which is under sanctions now, not because of that, but because of she is also a CEO of big media holding, who is uh, contributed to the war in Ukraine a lot. All of them prefer their life in some other countries. They steal the money from Russia and Russian people, which are proven facts, as you can see here. And they hide this money abroad in the foreign banks. And this money doesn't work for Russian economy or helping Russian people in any way. Now the sanctions, well, first was sanctions about Magnitsky Act. Now the sanctions because of the war in Ukraine is really hard on them because they taking away their stolen money they're not getting access to their yachts to their properties in other countries and putin by bringing up mr browler in such a big deal like a summit and a press conference with the president of the united states confirmed to me to you to everyone that he's a corrupted politician who wants to do anything possible to get mr browler because he exposed the corruption and because he is the reason of the sanctions. At that time, there was no sanctions like right now after the full-scale invasion in Ukraine in, in this year, 2022. So I'm saying down with Putin. He should be in, investigated for corruption 
for starting the aggr aggressive war in some other countries, which we have a law in the Russian Federation against us, for using mercenaries, which is again, we have a law in the Russian Federation forbidding mercenaries, which Putin made his own army out of the Wagner group, for murdering Russian people, for murdering Ukrainian people, for being a terrorist, number one terrorist in the world who threatening the world with nukes, with a hunger, and with a disaster on the biggest nuclear station in Europe, in Zaporozhye. Putin has to be investigated, and he has to pay for his crimes. He should not be a president of one of my countries, Russia. He didn't obtain that position legally, and he should pay for his crimes. And so is people who supported him and who was hiding money for him. There should be more sanctions placed on Putin himself, his family members, his friends, and his oligarchs. Putin should be imprisoned. War in Ukraine should be stopped. Russian troops should move out of Ukraine. Period. Thank you for watching. And have as good day as you can.